Hello everyone, it's Dylan from Yu-Gi-Oh! Everything, and welcome back to another Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's episode review. Man, this has been the weekend of Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's, and it makes sense with the new opening, the new ending, and the beginning of the brand new season. So in today's video, I am going to be reviewing the most recent episode, episode 53, featuring the duel between Otis and Swirly. Uh, definitely not a duel I would have expected at all to kick off this season and before I go forward probably going to speak very little about the opening if you want my thoughts on the opening I've done a live reaction video and I've done an entire 20 plus minute breakdown of the opening visuals with my friend Pete those videos are on the channel they will be linked down below so you can check those out for any discussions or thoughts that I have on the opening visuals what did I think about episode 53. Uh, to be honest, I thought it was a, an okay episode. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of the episode. I thought it was a little a little mediocre. You know, I thought it was just kind of a get-me-by episode, uh, which, mediocre but forgivable. Um, and even though I was not the biggest fan of 53, Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's to me, usually does this at the beginning of their seasons, where they have an episode that feels a little kind of, not fillery, that, that's a dumb word in this case, but like kind of get me by. Uh, fillery is a very dumb word because I think Swirly could end up being a very important character down the road, but just kind of a get me by episode. There were moments of this episode that felt kind of like the first episode or the first few duels in Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s where the rush duel was a little more tutorial-like. Uh, the dueling was very basic in the sense of copying what happened with Yuga and Otis way back in episode one. And for me, this episode, a lot of the comedy just didn't land. Uh, the comedy has been pretty good in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. There were a few funny moments. Everything with Tiger was hilarious and Rook just being Rook was also funny. But Swirly is the character in particular that was obviously the focus of this episode, a more shy and reserved character that maybe Rook takes under his wing because he sees a little bit of himself in Swirly. At least that's the sentiment that is shared uh, amongst the main group at the end uh, but Swirly I don't really like characters personally that don't really speak that much uh, and I know that might sound a little harsh it's just a, a personal taste a, a personal preference of mine um, and when they do speak they're very like comedic where you know he's just saying his name over and over uh, and I didn't really I didn't really love his character now do I think that his character could be holding some deeper meaning and some deeper secrets there possibly um i do think that his whole design is kind of interesting but at the same time i think he could also just be a character that is being brought in to add more comedy during a season that might get a little more intense uh, more intense than what we are used to when the goha siblings get introduced the other reason why i'm pretty completely fine with this being a a decent episode uh, in my opinion is they didn't want to overload us here. Uh, they just gave us a new opening, which, by the way, the visuals and the song are so, so good. One of the best Yu-Gi-Oh! openings we have had in a very long time. And so they knew that the fandom was going to be discussing that opening. Utopia, the Goha siblings, the silhouette in the Goha sibling shot that looks just like Yuga. And so instead of giving us an amazing opening one episode here of the season where you have the Goha siblings coming and wreaking havoc and having a riding duel right off the bat, you wait a week. You put in that buffer week. We just had a great finale with Yuga and Rook. And so you have an episode that's just, again, a get me by episode. And to me, the true season, as many of these seasons have, will start next week when you, well, I'm imagining it's Yuga, takes on um, Euro, I believe it is, the yellow-haired uh, Goha sibling in a riding rush duel, which is going to be insane. So because of that, I don't really mind that this was a bit of a, a cool-down episode for me. I kind of expect that going into the first season, uh, or the first episode, excuse me, of each new arc when it comes to sevens. Some shots I want to talk about uh, and the first, of course, being the opening sequence. This episode really mirrored episode one in a lot of ways, just with the addition of Swirly. And season one had Yuga dreaming about all of his friends in the Rush Duel robot. Well, this season begins with Yuga also dreaming. The sequence of him waking up is almost identical to what happened in episode one. However, 
I rewatched that scene a couple of sh uh, a couple of times. I rewatched that shot a couple of times. A very apocalyptic, very very apocalyptic, and we have this huge comet and meteor coming down right on Goha. And what's interesting about this shot is Goa City already looks like a meteor hit it. I mean, Goa City is in very, very bad condition. You can see the Goha building barely standing. Um, Roman says, this is the end. Rook comments about how this is the, the, the day of fate is finally here. And Yuga says, we're okay. We have the Rush Duel robot. And the Rush Duel robot fights off the meteor. Now, I wonder if this is supposed to be taken verbatim or if this is very, very symbolic. And this whole segment could be symbolic of the Rush Duel robot, meaning Rush Duels, are going to be the tool that will allow Goha City and ultimately everyone that lives in Goha City to survive, where the meteor and the comet crashing to Earth is symbolism for the Goha siblings making their way to Earth and to Goha City. And I wonder if that's the, the symbolism here, or I wonder if this is supposed to be taken more literally, and maybe the Goha siblings are coming because they know that there's a, a huge impending doomsday threat coming to Earth, and they need to uh, destroy Rush Duels for whatever reason, even though it seems like Rush Duels are going to be the tool that will allow Yuga and his friends to persevere through this apocalyptic end-of-world threat. So I think we could be moving into some serious territory with Sevens where there is some really serious, like maybe life or death consequences. Uh, and I know that might seem like a pretty out there thing to say just based on this, this one shot, but that one shot, very, very apocalyptic. And that's the shot that sets the tone for the season. So keep an eye on that. And I really want to know what you guys thought of that. Uh, very, very interesting. The symbolism rush duels will be the weapon uh, that will allow them to persevere through, uh, you know, doomsday threats, uh, which I really liked. Otis has a few words and a few lines of dialogue in this episode. He does show up to confront Yuga. Uh, one of the more fascinating things is he says to Yuga, do you have any proof that it was me uninstalling Rush Duels? Uh, and he says, you know, thanks for the duel. And then, of course, Yuga says you're welcome and kind of loses focus for a second. And Otis then gets away and disappears. Yuga doesn't really care because he's like, ah, you know, we'll, we'll see him again. Um, I thought Otis might be hinting at the arrival of the Goha siblings, which we know will start, of course, next week. He didn't really say anything that could allude to the Goha siblings, but very weird to me that he tried to play it off like he was not the one that uninstalled Rush Duels. Now, Yuga and everyone that lives in the Yu-Gi-Oh! 7's world really doesn't have definitive proof that he was the one who uninstalled it. The only reason we as the audience are so sure is because we literally watched a scene where he said, real-time Rush Duel uninstall. But that's not a scene that Yuga or Nail or Roa or anyone in Yu-Gi-Oh! 7s actually saw. So I don't really know what sort of angle he's trying to play there. Maybe he's trying to hint that he was, his hand was forced to uninstall Rush Duels. Maybe he's trying to hint that he was a, a guinea pig in all of this, and there was a, a higher power that was forcing his hand to uninstall Rush Duels. I thought that was just such a a weird angle for Otis to to go at, which makes me even more fascinated and more intrigued on his character. Uh, but seeing him duel swirly, again, the duel, to me, very forgettable. Um, it, it felt very tutorial-like. I thought the moments where Swirly drew one card at the end and then Rook was like, no, you can draw as many as you want. You know, th those moments were kind of hit or miss. Most of them were, were misses for me comedic-wise because, again, it felt like a very tutorial-style episode when it came to the dueling aspects, but it's Swirly's first time rush dueling, so it does make sense from a story perspective. Uh, again, I just... I, well, I didn't really connect with Swirly's character. I have a hard time connecting with characters like that, and my opinion on him may very well change as the show goes on. You know, it's it's just one episode. Um, but other than that opening sequence, and other than the Otis and Tiger shots, uh, there wasn't anything that really blew me away in this episode, which is completely okay. That's usually how these uh, arcs kick off in Yu-Gi-Oh! Sevens. Again, a little calm before the storm, a little uh, rest right after the finale of the last arc, 
end before this arc really gets going. And I am so excited for the Goha siblings. I am so excited to see um, episode 54 and riding Rush Duels. I mean, that is going to be amazing. And, um, you know, I don't really have too much more to say about the episode. So, I mean, you guys let me know. Did you feel that this episode was a little eh, kind of like me? This was probably my least favorite episode since Pigeon versus Rook. I was not a fan of that episode. That was 37, I believe. Um, and, you know, listen, every single Yu-Gi-Oh! has episodes that don't really hit for me. And this was one of them. Most episodes in Sevens hit. Not everyone is going to. Uh, I have a feeling next week's episode is going to be phenomenal. But let me know your thoughts on episode 50. Three. Uh, if you want to talk about opening two, you can, but I really implore you to check out my breakdown and my opening reaction or my live reaction to that opening, which again are linked down below. Thank you all so much for taking the time and watching. A special thank you to my platinum tier patrons Horace May, Goosey Q, Panther J, Blue Maiden 28, Jarrett Bueller, X Slayer 64, Brandon Gomez, and Tenjo Kogami Zaisen. And do my diamond tier patrons Jesse Wood, Latrell Smith, and Anime Kaput. And do my Egyptian god tier patron Xyz Lover 104. Thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Thank you to everyone who is a YouTube channel member. I appreciate it so, so much. You guys help me out tremendously. I stream on Twitch, I'm on Twitter, and I'm on Instagram. Links for all those will be down below. Once again, thank you all so much for watching. I will talk to you in the comment section, and I hope you have an amazing day.